Good evening guys, Hayden here. I gotta be somewhat quiet because my wife is putting the uh, sun down to sleep right now. But uh, I'm actually on vacation and I wanted to get out a video anyways. Um, I have a little special here tonight for everybody. Um, this is gonna be from one of the viewers actually uh, named Tom. Tom, what's up man? Um, I have some questions from you that I wanted to address that I thought were great. That would be um, awesome value to uh, the whole community here. So I want to bring these up. Um, so he has a three-part question. Um, so the first part was, where do I go to source? Um, I can't exactly give you my sources, Tom, and everyone else, but uh, I can say what I will say is the one great starting point is to go to Goodwill, and that is that is one of my sources. Uh, in particular, it's the Goodwill outlets. Um, if you're in any major city, you should have a Goodwill outlet somewhere close to you. Um, it also goes by a blue hanger outlet. Um, and, you know, I've even seen some that, that actually said retail, but um, you just need to, you know, the best place to look is to go on Google Maps Type in Goodwill's near me, Goodwill outlet near me, Goodwill blue hanger, and see what comes up there. Um, also, you can always call ahead, or another tip is you can look at the photos that are on the Google images, and if there are photos of the blue bins on wheels that are able to be pushed around, then you know you're actually looking at an outlet, because the uh, Goodwill outlets are the only ones who have those blue bin carts that you can push around you know where all the items are on them not like a shopping cart um so that's where i go you know that's one of my main places i go to source um another one of his questions was how many places did i contact to get the contacts i have now and i believe the answer to that is um you know i picked up the phone and uh i was calling I called a ton of people in state, out of state. Um, obviously I went for the low hanging fruit first and I called people that were close by in the area. Um, I would say my success rate was actually pretty high too. Um, you know, you're calling to buy, you're not calling to really sell anything, you're calling to actually buy things. So it's, it's actually, you know, I don't know how many people out here that are watching my video have ever been in sales but you know it's a lot easier than your traditional sales you know call it's you know you're actually buying something so most of the time people are happy to talk to you about it and um, you should be calling thrift stores donation stores um, you know goodwill salvation armies um, you know there's there's a ton of chains that you know do donations um there was one out here um i'm in arkansas right now and there's one called like samaritan's purse or something samaritan something i've never heard of that and i bet you they would do something with wholesale so if you're out in arkansas give them a call um maybe it's called good samaritan's thrift store i don't know something like that but i think there's more than one um so yeah, I mean, just, you know, Google thrift shops, Google donation centers. Um, oh, here's a huge one. Uh, so my brother lives out in California and there's a place called Earl Warren Showgrounds. And um, it turns out they had one of the biggest book sales of the year in the entire nation. And that was put on by Planned Parenthood of all people. So. You know, that leads me to believe I'm sure you can, you know, get in touch with a um, Planned Parenthood in your area. See if they have any books um, that they are willing to sell. Um, and you can even or just make a donation and give you books. I don't know. But it's worth reaching out on that as well. Um, his last question was, um, what's stopping so let's say you make contact they want to sell you some gaylords so you're saying what's stopping you um or stopping them from saying that their books are not pre-scanned and they're good quality books well 
the whole thing with that is if you're actually trying to build a long-term relationship with these people and they want you as a customer, then they're not going to do that to you. They're not going to lie to you. Um, and they're going to sell you books that are good, or at least that they think are good. Um, and quite frankly, if they are pre-scanning them, you're going to know, aren't you? Because you're not going to get any green books out of there. And that's not going to be coincidence, um, especially if you get multiple from them at one time. So I wouldn't, you know, I think the best way to negate that from happening is to have that conversation say, you know, I've had this happen to me in the past where, you know, they said they weren't pre-scanned, but when I got back and I went through them all, I found out that there were none that were green. So obviously they were being scanned. And, you know, I want to build a long-term relationship with your company and I have the capacity to take, you know, a ton of books from you in the future. So I think just setting that groundwork um, initially and just letting them know that this is going to be a long-term thing will be all you need to do. Um, I've said this before in a video in the past, and uh, one of my newest sources, um, the first batch was horrendous. I mean, it was absolutely terrible. I know they don't scan their books, but it was, it was like trash, magazines, um, National Geographic, just all these things that are essentially not even books. And, um, you know, so I address that because I want to work with them full, t you know, long, long term and full time. And, um, I think they're going to be a great source. So I addressed it with them and they were like, Hey, yeah, we're more than happy to sort through these better. And, uh, the next run, you know, we'll see what we can do. So, you know, I got another run from them and sure enough, there were no, geographics, no paper, trash, none, none of that. It was all gone. It was great. Um, <clears throat> it's still not where I need it to be. But, uh, you know, now I'm going to add another layer to that. Now I'm going to do, you know, I was getting a ton of books that didn't have dust covers and that were also like just old books. And so my next step is going to be, hey, on top of, you know, these parameters, I also need it's essentially going to be just, I need books that have a 978 barcode on the back. And so if they're able to do that for me, um, they're going to be someone I'm going to keep buying from. And I buy all their books now um, consistently. So they have every motivation, I suppose, to help, um, you know, facilitate that and make sure I get what I need in terms of the quality. Because right now, um, they're my most expensive source and I usually get books for a dollar and nine cents on average from the Gaylords with theirs. It was over double that. So I'm still making money off of it, but I'm not making enough to justify all the cost and the trips and the time. So I'm hoping that that uh, pans out well. And, um, if you guys have any other questions along the lines of uh, negotiation, getting your first bulk sources, um, you know, uh, I, average price, I can go over that real quick. So in my opinion, I just told you what my average book uh, cost is per book, which is a dollar and nine cents, but you should never be paying more than $75 for a Gaylord. Um, that's not including truck costs. Um, if you can get it with truck costs, that's great, obviously. But um, my average cost per gay has never exceeded 75. And on top of that, I've not, my average pull per box was about 55 books, green books per box. Um, a full box is a thousand books. Um, and also uh, some more stats. Um, since I started shipping bulk pallets, I was able to change the um, repricing settings, lower my minimum allowable uh, profit per book uh, to go down. Um, I now have it where sometimes if the rank's high enough, I'll take a 50 cent profit book, but mostly it's 75 cents. But I'm able to pull now, you know, 75 to 
125 now a bin. So that's obviously raised my per profit per box. Um, I want to shout out Kyle. Uh, what's up, man? Um, on that note, because he just did a run and he was telling me his average profit came out to it was like something like eighteen hundred dollars for six Gaylords, which is about three hundred dollars a piece in profit, and that's a little low. But I was talking to him about how he could potentially um, talk to them about you know, working out a, a better price for more or seeing if they can be sorted better or, you know, some other option where, you know, if he buys, you know, like I said, if he buys a full truckload, he can bring down the cost. Therefore, you know, he can be getting that $300 profit and it's going to be okay for him. So there's a lot of stuff you can do to make things work. Um, don't shut down the source just because the first batch was bad and don't, you know, also, if if someone says that they don't scan their books, then, you know, I would take their word for it. Do a small run to start. See if they're, you know, if they're being truthful or not. Even see if they'll let you scan a Gaylord on site first before you take them, um, if you want. I, why not, right? So there's a lot of options you can do. Uh, just keep an open mind and uh, get out there and keep feeding the beast, guys. I'll talk to you later.